Hello and welcome to The Pale Beyond. This is a very different type of game from what I normally play. Um, so I'll warn you up ahead, it's quite a slow, story-driven, uh, interesting little kind of, almost like an interactive novel type game. Um, but it's, the art style on it is really nice and it's, uh, it's just a very beautiful game. Um, very character-driven and story-driven. Um, so I hope you guys will join me for it because I think it's also really interesting and from what I hear, I've, although I've not really played it, I've, I've played a little just as a test kind of thing, um, but from what I hear it's it's incredibly difficult with like decisions that massively impact the game and, and stuff like that, so um, kind of think uh, along the lines of Ixion where you've got to kind of like make decisions as, as leader of this group of people going off for an expedition, every decision you make good lead to good or bad things happening so uh it should be an interesting one so i hope you'll stick with uh stick with me through it but uh, like i said it's going to be quite different from what i normally play anyway let's get into it shall we uh, so we're going to start a new expedition will the air be cold a flake and white a sailor begs their pledge now i'm not quite sure what the purpose of this little poem thing is but i wonder if it's kind of a way of generating the seed for the game if you know what i mean but uh yeah we've got a we got to write a poem to start off with, so... Um, so, I think to the ice they'll pray that leads reveal... Um, the, to the ice they'll pray that leads reveal some charted course ahead of glory found and forged in frost so that their tale be spread. A hunger draws the desperate here. It's one that can't be fed. What will ye do when steel hearts break and courage does abscond? I'll learn to live a life out here, out in the pale beyond. Begin your journey. <laughs> a little foreshadowing there with the temperance at the bottom of the hill, uh, of the ocean. Crew wanted. Able bodied crew wanted for dangerous expedition. Months of darkness, low wages, slim chance of safe return. Glory to be had in the event of success. Address of relief. Lovely. What a great advertisement that is. <laughs> You're in alone in the office. Uh, the tea in your hand has long since gone cold. Um, it's perfectly adequate. Looking around the room, you can make out a collection of military books. On the desk is a ship in a bottle. A metronome ticks away steadily. <laughs> Harmless. Harmless. A simple reminder of the time you spent waiting. It stops. Keep waiting. You hear footsteps climbing the stairs that brought you here. Remain standing. The door behind you swings open. The captain... Bounds past you to the other side of the desk. Do you have all your teeth? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Answer the question, please. I have not had scurvy before. If that's what you're asking. Me neither. The captain sits down. How many people have you died under your supervision? Um, none. Meaning you're either perfect for the job, or a liar. Or you've never been in command. Which is it? It's the latter. I've never been in command. Really? Command test a person. Mel, do you think you're ready? Is anyone really ready? Done more than others, it would seem. Please take a seat. Sit down. Chair is uncomfortably large. The seat feels worn. <laughs> Such a power play. Um, I'm Captain Hunt. Sure. Uh, wait for him to continue. I hope you weren't waiting too long. Fine. There's been a lot of candidates. Some good, some bad, interesting mix. I'm sure you understand the need for discretion. Keep listening. Months of darkness, low wages, slim chance of return. That didn't deter you, did it? Quite the opposite, it's why I'm here. Thirst for adventure, then. I'd keep that to yourself around the other sailors. They might drown you in it. I have a few questions first. Were you born a landlubber or a sea dog? I was born a landlubber. I'm from the city, but made my way to sea eventually. Military experience? Uh, merchants. Sailed the merchant lines, 12 years. Very good. What did you trade in? Pretty much anything we can get our hands on. Have you ever fired a weapon? Yes. Have you ever killed a man directly or otherwise? No. You're not married, are you? Of course not. You better not have a death wish 
one must believe their return to justify leaving in the first place. Any less and you're doing yourself a disservice. Um, where are we headed? We're headed to find the ship in that bottle. The Viscount. Heard of it? Yeah. But I don't believe it. Five years ago, she set sail on a research expedition towards the Dead Peninsula. Then, you know, they were trying to find and study the absolute magnetic south. But they clearly failed. <laughs> she never came back. Her last known location was 200 miles south of land, presumed lost in the ice. Five years is a bit late for a rescue operation. They're probably dead. Alive or not, their research is supposedly, supposedly of extreme importance. And we're supposed to be chasing that research. Exactly. Let him continue. Here's what we do know. Not one person or thing have been heard from the Viscount since it first left port. Until now? Until now. Someone was found who claims to have been on that ship. Where are they now? Dead. But their testimony seems to have outlived them. Those with more money than sense want that old ship. That's the job. If I don't pick the first mate, somebody else will. And well, my judge of character gotten me this far. What of our crew? Quite the mix. A work in progress. Some I've known for years. They get in on trust and experience. Others, well, they interview. You don't have a f full crew already? Uh... Not entirely. A different undertaking than usual. We do have transport, though. We'll be travelling on board the Temperance. She's a beauty. Greenwood. Generational. Not many like it have left these days. The Viscount and the Temperance, they're sister ships. Built together. Sent out into this world to die alone. Poetic. Indeed. I like to think one calls out for the other. What do you think? It's worth it if there's a chance of anyone alive. Sounds like you'll need all the help you can get. We will. Captain checks his watch. Anyway, I think I've heard enough. We'll leave in a month. Welcome aboard, Shaw. Proverbially speaking. You're not what I expected. And what did you expect? We're more than our mistakes, Robin. Let people surprise you. I'll see you on the Temperance. I have a good feeling about you, Shaw. Feelings mutual. Captain makes his way to the door and you follow. You arrive at the docks a month to the day. Before you lies a ship. The letters on its side read Temperance. You walk the cobble to the boarding ramp. Besides is a sharply dressed man overseeing the loading of cargo. He turns to you with a stern expression. You can feel his eyes assessing you. Templeton. It's good to see someone else with land legs. You must be Hunt's pick for first mate. He extends an arm. Shake his hand. I shall be operating as the chief science officer on this expedition. I'm also the incumbent representative of our benefactor. Do, however, consider myself and my team at your you and the captain's disposal. What did you specialize in? Applied botany. Um, that's reassuring. <laughs> he nods. No doubt I needn't inform you of your duties. You're second only to Captain Hunt himself. Though I must warn you that you have quite the task ahead. The rabble I've spent the afternoon sorting are the same that you'll have to whip into shape. Punctuality, schedule, a strict adherence to what we need if this expedition is to succeed. I expect you to be organised, sort. You would not have been assigned the role otherwise. I doubt there'll be much issue. We can only hope. But your role is more strenuous than it would first seem. Let me know when you're ready to depart, and make sure to savour these last moments on land. The less valuable time we waste here, the better. Okie dokie. We've got a chappy over here. A young man stands at the ramp, stealing himself from the journey ahead. Hesitantly, he begins to drag his feet up the ramp onto the ship. Temperance. Hunt's description of the ship was accurate. Near identical to the Viscount. Barring some modern ad additions. Set sail. Let's go.
First mate Shaw's personal log. It's been one month since I signed on, and one week since we've set sail aboard the Temperance. I'm told the waters will get warmer as we pass the hemisphere before they turn colder. I've never been on a ship like this before. A sturdy ship. It's hard to imagine how many crews she's mothered before us, repurposed incessantly. The roaring machinery should see this old steward of the sea through the ice, and us with it. I can't help but wonder who's footing the bill for all this, certainly not the captain. Such modifications to the ship mustn't have come cheap. It's none of my business, really, but the question still lingers in my mind. As for its master, he's mostly kept to his quarters so far. I'm not sure what to make of our leader. He's not telling the whole truth. Enig enigmatic indeed, I mustn't let my guard down. As for the rest of the crew, there are now 22 of us, including the captain. Our next port will be our last before we enter the ice to pick up the remaining four members of the crew, the scouting team. I'm just also keen to work out a deal on a pack of sled sledding dogs. I've sailed with worse. We came across all kinds trading with merchants, but rarely this split. When I hunt sailors approaches, Captain wants you at the helm. I'll head there now. You send the stairs to the stern and find the old captain manning the helm of the ship. Ah, Robin, lovely day for it, isn't it? It is indeed, Captain. Indeed. If stay like these, I make sure to do my share of the sailing. Let him continue. He thinks for a moment before stepping aside and stretching out a wrinkled hand. Did you ever take the helm in the Merchant Navy, or were you stuck carrying crates? Here, why didn't you have a try? Take the wheel. You grip the wheel of the ship and feel the weight of the waves in your arms. The memory in your muscles rear themselves as you begin to move in time with the ship and the wind. Easy. There, you have it. The captain pats you on the back. Fantastic. Now try to get a sense of where we are. Get some perspective. Peaceful, isn't it? He takes the wheel back from you. I think I'll drink the morning in a little longer. Would you mind prepping my quarters for the day's work? There's much to do. All right. Here we go. On the desk, you make out a variety of papers, notes, and maps. As well as a sealed letter with a stamp you recognize as the mark of the Apperton Tinning Company. The desk itself is suspended with ropes to keep it safely in place. A classical painting depicting sailors doing battle with a kraken. You're unsure of its, if it's any historical significance, though recognize the ship as the galleon of Captain Hamish. A pristine furnished tub secured to the floor, a luxury to be had on the ice. All right. You take the seat at the end of the room, the captain joins you. Now let's run through our provisions before taking requests. To the start, there's 23 souls signed onto this expedition, expedition, ourselves included. There's 16 free... Uh, to be assigned ta to tasks if they're if they aren't already busy the rest are deployed to their permanent stations you are only able to deploy crew you you have discovered they must be in good health and not otherwise deployed to another post we'll be picking up a scouting crew at the next port the lot of us also seem to be in good spirits the expedition will end tearing itself apart if you end the week with no decorum left we have enough provisions for at least six months in case of emergency if you cannot afford the minimum food rations at the end of the week, the tr crew will become malnourished. Unless cured, the malnourished status will develop into scurvy, a severe status effect that prevents crew from working, eventually killing them at the end of the week. And more than enough fuel to see us there and back again. Older temperatures will increase the minimum fuel required at the end of the week. If you cannot afford that minimum, crew will become freezing. Unless cured, the freezing status will develop into frostbite, a severe status effect that prevents crew from working, eventually killing them at the end of the week. The sledding dogs, well, there's still a matter of negotiation. Dogs will be needed to send sledding teams out to gather resources on the ice. Sending hunts out further requires a greater amount of dogs. They will rest and become available between the weeks. Now on to the work. Corvid, a sailor enters. We found a stowaway in the lower hold. Bring them in. Another sailor enters, leading a young man by their side. You know, you're not the first stowaway I've had. Captain studies them further. You should know where we're heading, don't you? I do, sir. The ice. Did you know that before you climbed inside that crate? I did, sir. Ha, how old are you? You're hardly a useful pair of hands. Not true, I can pull my weight, sir. Do you know your jibboon from your bow spirit? 
bow spritz. I do. I learned it all from my dad. Your dad? He's Ward's son. Followed him on board back in the city. What should we do with him, Captain? Hmm. Well, sure. Hunt eyes you up. Your first mate. What should we do with him? This is your decision to make, not mine. He's not staying aboard, or I'll keep them keep them on board. I'm gonna boot him off. He's not staying on board. Ditch him when we make export. We don't need more mouths to feed. Yeah, leave him with a bit of money so we can get home. Drop them off. Leave them with enough money to catch a boat back to the sea. I didn't think it pertinent to bring any money out to a frozen desert, did you? Best hope the boy's father is enough to keep them going. Two sailors drag the stowaway boat back to blow deck, taking him to see his father in the crew cabins. And what of the father? Could we drop him off with the boy? Uh, he signed a contract. He stays. <laughs> His son. It's his son. That's for him to decide. Uh, yeah. Very well. Hopefully he doesn't care for the run and I'm not down a sailor. Well, that matter's sorted. Cordell, have you agreed upon my conditions? To the point, eh? Sure, this is Lady Cordell. Cordell's here to provide us with the kennel of hounds for the sleds. And our agreement was that she would train them up until we part ways at the nearest island. But you neglected to inform me that you were bringing my dogs through the Pale Passage. I had no intention of sending the pack to its death. You seem to have a good faith in this expedition. It's one thing to ask for my whole kennel, it's another to drag them into the ice to chase a myth. Never before has a buyer been so dishonest, and never before has a seller made such strong demands. What exactly are these demands? She demands we allow her to come along on the expedition as a member of the crew. None on this ship have the experience and familiarity with these dogs that I possess. If you are taking them to such a brutal location, they will need me to guide them, if they have any chance of survival. The humans on board too, of course. Of course. You can see my dilemma, sure. Bringing on another member of the crew is a risk, but our hands may be tied. Your thoughts? I don't see the harm in having an expert on sled dogs. Hmm, a good point, sure. This deal is already to your benefit. Do you have anyone on board with extensive training in the management and ruling of dogs? Your sleds are useless if you can't control the dogs efficiently enough to haul them. And I would like to ensure my dogs are treated properly. I hope you're as experienced as you claim, Cordell. Trust me, I am. I'll have a room prepared for you below deck. No need, you'll find me in the forecastle with the dogs. He leaves. Okay. I hope I'm not making a mistake, sure. We have 14 dogs available, and he took the stowaway off. Now, his dad might leave, which will take us down a sailor. But with the dog lady there, I mean, maybe that, that might balance out. Now that's all sorted, I have one more errand for you to do. Could you grab the Stoke brothers and order them to meet me up deck for dinner? Hefty lads, red hair, you couldn't mistake them for another. Stoke brothers, who are they? You haven't met all the crew yet. Stokes have been serving me for years. They'll be down in the middle deck. In the meantime, you should grab a copy of the crew manifest and get acquainted with more of the crew. Okay. Upon closer inspection, you make out the ship's photographer, Asher Belford, balanced on the ship's mast with a camera lining up a photo. Wait for her to finish. Snapping a shot, she clambers down, only noticing you on her landing. Oh, Officer Shaw. It's about time we met the first officer of the ship. Kasha, Kasha Belford. Nice to meet you, Kasha. I suppose there was some sort of rule against what I was doing up there. Deepest apologies, but sometimes there's a shot you just cannot pass up. An accomplished photographer, Kasha Belford, won the Fentler Prize, the highest honour in journalism for her work covering plague, outbreaks and riots in the capital city. It came as a surprise to many that such a reputable journalist would take such an interest in this expedition. There was scarcely any chance of Hunt or the benefactor turning her away. You expected someone of her accolades to be older, more experienced. This is likely her first time on, a, on the sea like this. Her proof is all we have. Her accomplishments surely outweigh her inexperience. Inexperience is a matter of interest, but her accolades speak for themselves. Hmm. The cold game. Picture that as a header. Uh, there, continue. For the piece in this voyage, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a, a snappy name. Nobody will read it if the title sounds like a work of an amateur. I'm not a creative type. I'm sure you'd know better. Kasha tilts her head and grits her teeth, holding an inner debate with herself. Maybe not. How, how about Hunt's incredible voyage? Too fantastical? I swear I'll find the right name when time comes. I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? Apologies. I'm just a little excited. I've never been on a voyage like this. 
I suppose you're, in your experience, the open ocean is the home of the mundane, though I suppose you've never traveled this far south on the merchant lines. Uh, I'm not adverse to thrills. <clears throat> well, I hope we have some coming this way. I'm hoping to capture something right out of Kurt Darling's old escapades. That reminds me, he'll be joining us at the next port. I should get his picture at some point. Gasha holds up a camera with a sense of pride before holding it up to her face. Stand still, Shaw. <laughs> the captain sent me to grab a manifest. Oh yes, I'm putting it together a manifest of the crew for you. Uh, she hands you an annotated document. Here it is, the crew manifest. Okay, we have some sailors. Lots of them we haven't discovered yet. Scouts, engineers, scientists, specialists, resource cards, and key items. Audion and a camera. Okay. It's a work in progress. The scout team are to join us at the next port, and the captain's forbidden me from the boiler room. If you could ask the others to get their portraits taken, I'd be very grateful. Don't want to leave anyone out. I'll see what I can do. I'll not disturb you or your work any further, officer. I have a few more shots I want to get before the sun lowers, anyhow. Safe shots, officer. Don't worry. You leave her to work. Two Johns. You spot a large man with youthful gait, carrying a heavy crate over his shoulder with relative ease. Oh, you're officer Shaw. He gives you a bright, warming smile. Two Johns. That's what they call me. I'm sure you'll get your nickname later. G. Johns attempts to offer a handshake, but loses control of the crate. He struggles before firmly holding it in place with both hands. Uh, maybe later. Work awaits. Go to blow deck. And again. Okay. You got the cook or the accordionist. Oh, I'll approach the accordionist. One of the crew, a redhead man with a thick beard, sits proud playing an ivory accordion. He spots you and ceases in his playing. Need something? Uh, yeah. I was just looking for the Stoke Brothers. Emergency. Just a meeting with Hunt. You're speaking to one of them. Grimly Stoke. Well, we'll head up after dinner. You can go now. The man gestures to the cook across the room before resuming his playing. Friendly chap, huh? <laughs> Friendly chap. The crew have their meal. Passes in relative silence. Lovely. The crew return to their post. The hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the evening's twilight. Oh. Over dinner, you overhear the stowaway speaking with one armed man. You'll be dropped off the next port then. Ah, you, you, you can talk to the captain into letting me stay, right? Can't talk punt into anything when his mind's made up. Besides, he's right. But I can help. You're lucky he didn't throw you overboard. When we make land, I'm making sure you catch a trip back home. I'll be back after this. Not soon enough. Uh. Uh, we got uh, Mr. Gloss. You spot one of the Templeton science team pacing around the mid-deck searching through some luggage. That has been pulled from a cabin. Uh, look me... Let me look in the light. Where is it now? He notices you. Ah, I was ashore. Correct. Dwight Glossley. Apologies, I seem to have misplaced something while settling in the cabin. A bottle of wine, actually. You best not be drinking that on the job, mate. Oh, of course not. I have to keep the senses sharp in this work. My wife and I brought a bottle to celebrate with. To be saved for the journey back, of course. Well, if you find it, please let me know. Okie dokie. Well, Templeton again. You spot Templeton looking into the sunset. As you approach, he turns to you and nods. Ah, I was ashore. It will be some time before we see a sunset such as this again. The light distribution towards the South Pole is quite the change. Sentimental? In a sense, Templeton keeps his focus on reflection of the setting sun over the stirring waters of the ocean. There is great expectation upon us, officer. From who? Who is this benefactor of ours? That is not for you to know. Templeton looks down, catching his reflection on the ocean surface. He looks back up in the sunset. Quite the sight, but I wouldn't linger upon it too long. We should retire for the evening. It's important the first officer be well rested. We shall advance to the next week then. There we go. Everything so far is just literally introducing us to uh, the characters. <laughs> the game hasn't even begun yet. It's crazy. All right. 
Runt leaves the expedition on Orca Island. The ship makes its uh, last port at Orca Island. Cordell's sledding dogs are picked up. The scouting crew and Kurt Darling are picked up. The days are getting brighter as you move further south. Start the next week. Week two. There's a rat on your cabin door. Uh, come in. Door swings open to reveal Kurt Darling, all but filling its frame, grinning ear to ear. There you are, Oliver Sashore. The ship's navigator is a difficult man to miss. Stature and reputation precede him. Adorned with a slew of apparatus, this seemingly one-manned expedition would be known to anyone following the heyday of exploration and the merchandising that followed. I have no time for celebrity. It's an honour. I know little of the man. I know little of the man. His reputation is indeed great, but the man behind the legend is but a stranger. Hiding away from the rest, are you? Um, are you always this early to rise? Do you need something of me, Kurt? Uh, I'm not the sort to demand favours, Officer Shaw. Apologies for not stopping by sooner. It look, took a while to set up my team, and a great deal of the crew were quite eager to meet me. It's not often they work with a film star, is it? Certainly. It's completely understandable on their part. There aren't many who haven't seen my films, particularly in this line of work. More than one fellow on this crew said my work inspired them to explore the world. Quite the honour, is it not? I'm certain you, pray, you receive that praise often. Uh, not as often as you would think. Ahem. <laughs> Uh, I suppose I did get distracted, didn't I? Anyway, I was hoping you'd join me up and down. Does Hunt require my presence? No, no, no. Uh, we finally entered the pack. I thought you'd want to see it for yourself. I'll be right behind you, Kurt. Kurt turns to walk away before turning back. Oh, and enjoy the morning. Good day, sure. Ah, he leaves. As do we. Oh. Bump into... Uh, you know, note one of the science team returning to their room. Ah, Mrs. Gloss. Do you have a good rest? He nods to you. Uh, hello. I did not expect many to be up this early. Harriet Glossley. Ah, I believe I met your husband. Uh, yes, Dwight made mention of your encounter. He's still fast asleep. He's adjusted to the ship well. I believed a walk around the ship would help acclimatize, uh, acclimate myself to the waves. Perhaps it will take some more time. With that, Mrs. Gloss makes her way back into the cabin. The science team aren't used to the sea or the sailor folk. Quite the culture clash, isn't it? Well, I'm sure they'll grow used to them over time. Yeah, that's the thing. We've got, obviously, sailors, scientists, city-born scientists, used to labs and stuff, I suppose. We've got the helm over here. At the stern, you notice an older sailor at the helm. The old man takes in a deep breath of the cold air before letting out a satisfied exhale. Morning. And good morning to you. He eyes you up. Officer of Shaw, right? Lefty. Call me that on account of, well, it should be obvious. He chuckles. <laughs> Don't worry about the bad sight. This is all feel. Just keeping her steady. He examines you. Surprised, Hunt picked you from outside of it, uh, from outside for his first mate. I'm surprised as well. He seems the insular type. He is. You must be something special for Hunt to look outside the ranks. You've got the experience at least. Merchant Navy's quieter though. Mornings like these are about the only peace I get from the younger lot. You should take these moments when you can. Lefty returns attention to the helm. As you get older, I suppose you learn to value the quiet moments, eh? Let us hope we're just as diligent when we're old and grey. Myself, before you, of course. All right, join, join Kurt. You join Kurt at the bow of the ship. You both feel the temperance break the flows below you, gripping the railing. He draws an enormous breath. The footing beneath rises of the ship mounts an impending ice flow. There is moment's hesitation before a profound crack relieves the ship, cascading across the ice. He exhales. See? Nothing else like it. I just presumed you'd seen everything. A younger man, a younger me, would have agreed with you. It's an interesting mix. Nostalgia and the never-ending new. Look at the ice. No two cracks are the same. Did you just want to show me the ice? And you didn't navigate a poet. <laughs> We're about a week's sail from the last known location of the old Viscount. Assuming she isn't exactly where they left her, we can't take smooth sailing for granted. Same goes for this daylight. It won't remain this bright for so long once winter encroaches. Beautiful as the ice is on this course, it's going to get thicker. He looks out across the white. We won't be so confident when the leads dry up and we're stuck here till the next cycle. 
We need to change course. Avoid the pack. Have you informed Captain Hunt? He won't listen to me. He thinks I've been dulled by retirement. I've probably seen more ice than he has whiskey. Uh, it's not my decision. Yes, but we have the captain's ear. Have you ever experienced the long night winter? It's not pleasant, to say the least. If it comes to that, we'll adapt. There's a chain of command. This isn't one of your adventures, cereals, Kurt. Certainly not. If, you were, if I was satisfied with those, I wouldn't have left retirement. We're only as good as the unhappiest man, Robin. I'll do what I can. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. Kurt nods, turns back to look across the ice. I guess we should go see the captain then. Take requests. Ah, sure. Ready for another day's work? You hear Kurt's advice. He wants us to change course. Aye, he had a few words to share. He may have been an expert in his time, but these days Kurt is one with more money than sense. Anyway, back to work. I was hoping you'd help me work through a few more requests from the crew. You may have noticed the line pooling up outside. Everyone wants something, it seems. Call them in as you please. Hammond. A short, sour-faced man in engineer clothing approaches. Are you acting daft, Hunt? Not with intention. No bloody surprise you didn't notice. Sure, this is our chief engineer, Clive Hammond. An opinionated one. What is it, Hammond? Hammond! <laughs> We've hit the ice, and you haven't assigned any extra men down on the boiler. Have you... Uh, you have your engineering team. And we've only got six arms between us. I need more manpower maintaining this. Sailors. Many of the crew have their own tasks they're busy with. I know I've already assigned Smurf on a matter. The captain turns to you. How many do you think is fair? One, three, more. Open the crew manifest to choose how many sailors you wish to assign. Assign crew. Some choices require you to assign from your manifest. In this choice, you may choose the amount to assign. Are these not already doing something then? We don't want to put the helmsman on there. Joseph Joe Gren. Corvid. Amelia Corvid Sparrow. Killian Smurf Sanders. Deployed. So Doug runs da. He's only got one arm. So. Oh, great. We'll put two Johns. Put Amelia. And Joseph, I guess. And we need a fourth, huh? Great. Undiscovered. I got four people I haven't discovered yet. Got a scientist down there. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Doug Runsta. One armed. Not much use, but I don't want to take the helmsman down there. He's sailing the bloody ship. Confirm your orders. You can take two Johns, Rudstad, Corbett, and Joe. You're giving me Ward. Ward with one bloody arm. Would you rather none? The engineer holds his tongue. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> but you can tell me how right I was when it buried under the ice. <laughs> A good spirit, that one. Beneath the oil and the temper. He won't be seeing much of him, though. First to burrow himself into the boiler room. Kasha! Captain Shaw, I thought occurred to me the other day while looking through the crew's manifest and well it might be too late for this now that we've already entered the ice out with it i thought it'd be good to have individual photos of the full crew for your report not only my report it would be good reference for the manifest puts faces to the names much of this crew has served me for years some decades i have little problem putting faces to the names your thoughts sure it seems like a good idea if nothing else it would make for a good souvenir a waste of time we should be bracing ourselves to the ice not posing in pictures it's a bit late but it's now or never. May as well get it over with. I good point, but maybe you could sound a little more enthused. Well, Belford, I see no problem there. I'll arrange for the pictures to be taken before the crew have their dinner. Thank you, Captain. Sure. Uh, in the meantime, I'll attempt to get as many individual crew photos as I can. You're still welcome to help on that matter, Officer Shaw. He departs, satisfied. Corvid. Captain, word's gotten around about the stowaway we removed last week. It has? Aye. And their thoughts? They aren't one bit happy, least of all his da. He says it wasn't right to send the boy away. Only reason Ward stayed aboard was because he needed the pay. Up in arms, are they? No, they understand. Bears more food for the rest of us. Still not a wise move to upset the crew, is it? Sure, perhaps we should consider the crew's feelings next time. <laughs> Damn it! 
Because if I had left him on board, they would have been all pissy that they would have to share their rations. <laughs> Good, we've got that all settled then. Uh, perhaps we shouldn't rule out old Kurt so easily. If the man thinks there could be an alternate path through the ice, he's free to search for it. Sure, meet with him when you have the time. Changing course or not, we'll want one of his scouts set up on the crow's nest. Take care of that. Then you'll be done for the day. All right. Okie dokie. Let's talk to Shaw. Send me up there. I'll get you a reading. Scientist eyes the man's cane and turns to you. I believe the navigator means you to send one of his scouts. Navigator clears his throat and taps his cane. Of course. Uh, if you find one of mine, they'll get us a reading, rightly. Uh, okay. Scout from the crow's nest. The rigging. While examining the rigging of the entire ship, your eyes notice a figure darting by, climbing on the ropes with ease. The figure lands on their feet before dusting themselves off. Their outfit denotes one of Kurt's scouting crew. Acrobatic scout. Ah, no problem. She looks to you. And you are? Officer Shaw. Yourself? Flick. I'm one of Kurt's crews. Don't worry about my safety. I know what I'm doing. Trust me. Kurt doesn't just hire anyone. Well, he, he didn't hire me for no reason. Got this medal in gymnastics if you're worried about my credentials. Flick jumps up and returns to scaling the rigging of the ship. Okie dokie. Who we got over here? Approach the sick young man. Seasick. You spot a youthful looking man leaning over the side of the ship. He's slumped as he looks into the icy pool. It appears he's been visited by a spot of seasickness. Are you okay? You speak out and the sickly man doesn't answer. He raises his head and turns to spot you. His eyes widening in shock as he does. A respectable young man shaking with unease. He stares at you for a brief moment, a look of shame plastered upon his face. Uh, sorry. Yeah. I haven't seen you around. Who are you? Uh, I'm very sorry. Arthur turns around and hurriedly runs in the opposite direction, avoiding your gaze. Brilliant. <laughs> Poor guy, he's being sick. What's he sorry for? Uh, right, we'll send Flick up to scout then. Firm orders. They ascend to the nest, take reading with your sec with the sextant. All clear from up top. Lovely. Oh, hello, here we go, look. Um, Orca Island, that's where we just left. Your last port you made while you packed up Kurt and the scouting team from. And that's where we are. That's pretty cool. Let me get the whole map here. Nope. Well. Wow. And that's the last known location of the Viscount Island. The last known location of the Viscount, your destination. Oh, God, yeah, good luck with that. That is not looking good. We got to... We can't go through there. We got to go round, right? Round to the left, probably. Yikes. Yikes, dudes. Hang a left, hang a left. You overhear two of the newly arrived scouts crew talking. Ah, Queasley, have you any trouble settling in? Not too bad. I can't wait for a chance to sleep, though. A proper navigator never rests until their work is done. Of course, of course. I take it you had no issue settling in. Not at all. All the crew are a funny lot. Old Kurt certainly caught their attention. Ah. Do you think any of them would mistake Kurt and myself? I think you'd collapse from joy if they did. Ah, perhaps. Oh, we've added two more crew to our manifest. Basically, we've got to talk to all the crew and find all the crew in order to add them to the manifest. All right. Crew deck. Who we got here? Hooded Sailor. You spot a suspicious looking sailor emerge from the pantry. Hooded Sailor spots you, keeping their hands firmly in their pockets. Now, what it looks like. Not what it looks like, Officer Shaw. Black, but call me gnomes. I'm not thieving anything. I had not considered, but now. You think I protest too much then? No worries. I was just setting up practical joke. Ah, well, best of luck for that. And what is this practical joke? Not going to spoil the surprise. It's not at your expense, if that's your concern. I have to get some enjoyment around here, don't you think? With a mysterious trap set, Gnome scurries off to the upper decks to return to work. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. Ah, you must be sure. Seems you've met my brother already. Joran Stoke, but nobody calls me that. On this ship, I'm known as Junior. You seem more personable than your brother. Aye, <laughs> you definitely met Grimly. He's not the bad sort, my brother, just to the point. He decides if he likes you right quick. Hey, sure, can you grab some tins from the pantry? It's nearly time for dinner. Okay. 
I will grab some tins from the pantry. You, the moment you enter the pantry, a bag of flour drops in your head, scattering all over your officer's uniform. The hells was that, gnomes? You wipe the floor, wipe the flour off of you before continuing. Tinned food. You grab the tins. I'm now covered in flour. Best to make use of the kitchen while you can. Feed, feed the hoosh pot. Feed the hoosh. <laughs> Alright. So, ooh, the hoosh pot. Got anything for the hoosh? Oh, that's quite good. So, yeah, resource cards. I guess later on, we'll be able to upgrade the meals a little bit, perhaps to improve and earn some decorum back. Crew have their meal. Ah, shall we toast to the ice? Aye. The days get longer, but dinner, dinner is fixed. It will see us through the long days and the darkest nights. Crew return to their posts. The hammocks are unfurled in preparation for the union. You can't help but notice that it's still bright light outside. You notice two sailors passing by from the dinner table. An inebriated, inebriated sailor on wobbling legs leans on the shoulder of another. Ah, good times, good times. Need to learn to handle your drink, Tucker. Ah, but I'm fine. My mates can carry me, eh, Cavity? They can also drop you. Have two Johns carry you next time. Are you asleep? Shit. <laughs> Top deck. We can go see the dogs. Listen to some more gossip. You overhear two engineers chatting above deck, or rather, you overhear one engineer speaking with another. Don't you don't know how the chief could stay down there all evening? You ever seen Mr. Hammond eat? <laughs> I haven't. Maybe he doesn't eat, even eat. Man's not human if he can't work all day and night on that boiler. Probably doesn't sleep either. He probably sleeps. Aye, Dick. It's figurative. Right. <laughs> right. The fourth castle, the lady and her dogs. The dogs regard her with rapt attention as she paces between them, bowl in hand. The largest joins her side as you approach. Try some. Uh, I've already eaten. I've already eaten. Bear. She takes a sip herself without hesitation. Penguin. Some blubber. Fats. Proteins. Fastest way to hydrate them. Was there something you needed? Um, just inspecting the animals. They're, they're, they belong here more than we do. Unlike us, they need the ice. It cools them through their paws as they run. They'd overheat otherwise. You've been on this long ice for long? A long time, yes. Who's that beside you? This is Stanberry. Stanberry barks. As you were. <laughs> As you were. <laughs> Pet Stanbury. It barks at you and move behind its master. Aw, Stanbury don't like me. Stanbury no like eh? <laughs> All right, I think now we advance to the next week. And there we go. Let's see what week three. Oh, God. Jesus, that really eats through rations, doesn't it? Fuel rations, half. I lose 10 decorum, I'll lose 28 food and 56 fuel. Where are we going to get more fuel from? This is crazy. Okay. Well, uh, the rations are okay for the time being, but yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a very long expedition at this point. Another week passes, the temperatures finally enter the thick ice leads. The days grow even brighter. Start the next week. Didn't you say that we had enough supplies for six months? Yeah, after three weeks, we're almost out of freaking food. <laughs> what? 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 Save game. Yep. All right, let's have a look where we are. We are in the ice. We are in the ice now. Oh, God. This, this is not good. This is not good. We are just breaking through, cracking through the ice now. This this ship is only an absolute beast. Look at that. Really cool. Alright, let's take some requests then. Captain Hunt appears to be absent. His chair is unoccupied. Let's get started now. The whole room shudders. 
Oh boy. What in the... Well, I was worried about this. Look at that ice. We could be trapped for a while. Strong pressures. As if we didn't have enough to bother. Well, no need mucking around. Let's get to work. Where's Hunt? I'll grab him. I'm sure he felt it too. Sure, check the boiler room. I'm sure the mole man is probably has problems of his own. Not to worry, everyone. We'll be free and moving again before you know it. Back to work. That's nice of the navigator to basically do my job. Right. Kasha. I was sure what happened. Ships come to a stop. I almost flung my camera into a wall. We didn't hear anything, did we? We're trapped in some ice. We'll need to break loose and get moving again. Let's hope we can do that sooner rather than later. Trapped in the ice, though, that would make for a good photograph. Here he goes. Probably going to get herself killed. All right, boiler room. Ship's stuck, then. If you're looking for Hunt, you just missed him. Ow, we didn't cross paths. Don't ask me. I'm going to check with my brother. Okay. Approach the two men. Hi. Right. If you'd made errors in any, I'd tell you. I, It's secure, don't worry. They notice you. Impressive machine, this boiler. I'm sure you're aware of the situation, what's happening. Uh, I'm ensuring that the boiler was not damaged in the sudden commotion. And I told you that if it was, you'd already know. I'm not in the business of making mistakes. I know that if the furnace goes, we go down with it. Yes, but you're only one man with just a pair of engineers as assistants. Just looking at numbers of valves, this seems far too much for you to handle. Maybe your bloody benefactor should have considered that. I've gotten used to it by now. It will hold, trust me. I will? Well, I will have to, won't I? I don't fancy staying on the ship any longer than necessary. It's imperative we break free from the ice as quickly as possible. Hammond eyes you, a grimace on his face. First mate's here, but where's the one who got us into this bloody mess? I was hoping that Templeton knew. He's a difficult one to find. Indeed he is. I have a suspicion as to where he may now be. We're on a ship, an unmoving one at that. The man cannot simply disappear. If he's anywhere, he must be in his cabin. When you find the man, give him an earful on my behalf. Can't do it myself, too busy keeping us alive. Templeton gives a nod. I believe you and I both owe our good captain a visit, sure. But you should call the crew for dinner first. Routine is important, especially now. Not before we've fed this furnace. Mind grabbing some coal from the bunker shore, or are you afraid of dirty hands like Mr. Templeton is over here? Hmm. Ask engineer to raise the heat. Cures crew of freezing. Okay, leave. Okay, that's good to know. I can do that. Go up, grab some coal. One sack of coal. Lovely. And... Feed the furnace. There we go. Lovely. Leave. Okay, thank you. And we go back up. You emerge mid-deck to find the crew ready themselves for dinner despite the ice. Some seem nervous, others as if nothing has changed at all. Alright. Dinner. Tradition is important. The crew have their meal. The dinner is shared. The crew return to their post. The hammocks unfurled for the evening. You can't but help but notice it's still bright and light outside. Huh? You didn't see him either. He didn't pass by, but his cabin door was locked when I checked. Slippery bastard. What are you thinking, Hunt? Hmm. No sign of Hunt, I take it. Mr. Templeton passed by, but he wasn't exactly willing to take questions. Where the hell is the captain gone? Kurt, yeah. keep it up, lads. We'll set ourselves right in no time. Ah, sure. I just saw Templeton enter in the captain's cabin. Seems Hunt hold himself up inside. Maybe you had a word with our good captain, he'd be willing to lend a hand. Hmm. I was informed that he was here. Where could he have hidden himself? Maybe he's gone overboard. He has to be in here. I only doubt he's carrying beneath a table, sure. Ah! Captain's laugh rings out from behind the door. Captain watches you both, his head swaying as he chuckles to himself. You are a surprisingly different man to get hold of, Hunt. Seeing that this is your ship. Ha! I know it well. Hunt's eyes turn to you. I believe you two are already acquainted. How long have you been drinking? I don't suppose you care to join. Hunt shakes his flip hip flask as he holds it out, whiskey sloshing and spilling from the top. And what of you, sure? I can't tempt you with some sweet nectar. I don't drink. And you don't care for humour, 
be this once. Ah oh well, you're lost. You intend to offer drinks at this time like this. This ship, your ship, is trapped in the ice. It's my ship now, is it? And what do you expect me to do? Get the shovels out? You could at least do your work. I've carried your load until now. Carrying my load is your job. That's what you signed up for, isn't it? Mr. Hunt. Captain. If you are not fit to stand, then you should retire for the night. Sure, we'll stand in your stead and we can continue in the morning. And abandon my duty. No captain who would do that is a fit captain. Wouldn't you agree? Well, not you. Sure, isn't that right? What do you think makes her a good leader? Sobriety for a start. <laughs> he sits at his drink. But I'm serious, sure. To you, what makes a good leader? We don't have time for... In a word, then. What makes a good leader? Understanding. Understanding. Explain. The ability to adapt to your crew, to understand the individual needs to make up the whole. And if those needs conflict... It's all well and good to think you can bend and twist and please everyone. Do you think you could balance that? Scorn a man one day, then appease him the next. Do you think that balances out? Which is more likely to remember? Speaking in platitudes will do you no good. A good leader is something more than a single rule you were told to follow. When you see one, you just know. You have wasted enough time finding philosophical. Oh, my apologies. I'll ask the real questions. Sure, look at where we are. Do you honestly think we're going to survive this? I have no doubt we will. Well, I suppose someone has to carry faith with them. Captain laughs. Sure. Nobody knows we're out here. That doesn't leave this room. No, no. Wouldn't want to upset your employer. Our benefactor. We all want to be paid after this, don't we? Enough. If you weren't fit to lead this expedition, you should not have agreed to it. You shouldn't be. None of us should be here. Old Kurt paid handsomely to join. You're just a botanist sent to keep an eye on me. A doctor. Ha! Ah, and then there's me. What are we actually searching for? Chuckles, gesticulating mockingly with his hands. Ghosts. Templeton opens the door. The captain needs his rest. We'll discuss this once he's of sound mind. Let him speak, Templeton. I wish to know. That's all right, Robin. Um, go on now, sure. I'll be all right here. Beck's sake. All right. Great. <laughs> it was stuck in the ice. The captain is drunk and has completely lost all faith of the expedition already. And uh, we're basically already out of supplies. So there we go. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that is all the time we have for today. That is the pale beyond, basically. And it's... We're only just getting started here. We um, we really enter the game in the next episode. So I hope you've enjoyed the short introduction. And like I said, I know it's very different from the usual stuff, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed it today. Do let me know either way down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Um, I'm looking forward to exploring more of the story and the characters. I hope you are as well. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. As I said, I hope you enjoyed. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.